Awesome. Okay, well, welcome, everybody. Hopefully, uh, number one, you can hear the audio, most important, and also uh, see the screen as we will be presenting a PowerPoint presentation that will complement both of our uh, guest speakers today that we are very grateful to have with us. First, uh, before we get started, I want to extend immense gratitude for you taking the time out to join us today as we are excited to present to you our presentation on the digital government strategies that uh, ultimately lower the cost of revenue management. And more specifically, a detailed review of how the city of Estadia Hills, Alabama, has consistently bucked the national trend in regard to revenue management and forecasting. Presentation today will be roughly 30 to 35 minutes uh, with a short question and answer period. Uh, we'll have a 10 to 15 minute question and answer period directly uh, following the presentation today. And you can submit those questions via the chat feature here at WebEx or sub submit those inquiries directly to webinars at avenueinsights.com. So first, my name is Brenda Middleton, Marketing Manager here at Avenue Insights and Analytics, and I'll be your host and moderator. I will also facilitate those questions, and we have a team standing by. Uh, if you experience any technical difficulties, please send us an inquiry at webinars at avenueinsights.com, and we will be happy to assist you. Next, I'd like to briefly introduce both of our presenters. First, one of our longtime partners and valued customers, City Manager of Estadia Hills, Alabama, Jeff Towns. Good afternoon. Jeff has been in local... Jeff has been in local government for over 32 years and possesses a wealth of experience and understanding around all facets of municipal government and is especially adept at using data and analytics to promote community and economic growth. So first, welcome Jeff and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Next, Avenue Vice President Christy Cato. Christy brings over 20 years of direct management experience leading Avenue's tax administration division. Her team is directly responsible for servicing over a thousand local governments nationwide. This team alleviates the heavy lifting of day-to-day -day processes aimed at cutting operational costs while also maximizing revenue. You will hear directly from Christy on the exact process that her team follows and further recommendations moving forward that you can that you can use to maximize revenue. Thank you. So briefly, first we will look at a day in the life of local government as it pertains to the shifts in technology and the ongoing struggles of revenue management. Next we will hear from Jeff Downs on Vestavia Hills has consistently bucked the national trend in regard to revenue management and forecasting. This outline will include how Avenue's administrative solution has given Jeff the ability to use revenue data to inform and impact Vestavia Hills economic development planning. Moving along, Christy will then take us through the full revenue cycle. We will discuss the cost of revenue management, the avenue process, recommendations on handling delinquency, and the need to maintain local control. So as previously mentioned, this will be followed by a brief question and answer period. So feel free to submit those here in the chat feature, which would be the icon in the center bottom of your screen. Um, it looks like a message icon for those iPhone users. You can submit those questions directly to the chat feature. So very briefly, uh, who is Avenue Insights and Analytics for those of you who are not familiar with us? Avenue provides revenue enhancement and administration solutions to over 3,000 cities, counties, and state governments nationwide. Our data-driven analytic tools help provide the insight and clarity needed to reduce budgetary risk while also providing a more interactive way of visualizing your current and trending tax revenue. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Jeff Downs. Thank you, Brennan. I appreciate it and appreciate being a part of this, this webinar. Uh, as you said in my introduction, I've been in government for over 30 years, and, and a day in my life in government has certainly evolved over the course of time. Uh, what we used to do, we don't do now. What pressures that used to be slight are now pretty demanding. And our day in the life in, in government, in my day in the life, uh, we're seeing more and more pressures, pressures to sustain ourselves as far as revenue and how that revenue is produced, how it's generated, so that we can have long-term success. 
we uh, in Vespa Baby Hills do a community survey periodically, and the the word that comes up most in our surveys and in word clouds that we do is the word more. Our residents, uh, those seeking governmental services, want more. Their expectations are higher, and that puts significant pressure on us. Pressure to be able to generate revenue to su support those particular demands. Uh, further complicating the matter is the fact that, that uh, technology has led to online sales taxes being lost from local governments. Uh, our staffs, because of the baby boomer generation leaving the workforce, we're losing experienced employees. And just the demand for more and more technology uh, puts incredible pressure on us to be able to deliver that more. I mentioned technology, and technology is something that that is very good, but it also changes the way we operate in government. The demand is for knowledge, and that knowledge is demanded, at least from my perspective, with my uh, leadership, elected leadership and others, that knowledge is demanded now, not later. Uh, social media being what it is, the ability to uh, uh, share information quickly across uh, the, the neighborhoods of your, your various communities, uh, again, puts that pressure on you to be able to deliver the knowledge, respond appropriately, and that has led to the technology, more mobility, uh, more use of cloud technology, but also it places a risk, a risk for cyber crime and the need for cyber secu security. These demands and this technology uh, issue and context really requires partnerships. We can't do it alone in the city of Estavia Hills. So we partner with Avenue over the course of a, a lengthy period of time, and we feel like we've been able to address a lot of this. The bottom line of, of being able to deliver is being able to administer. Uh, in partnerships like what the city of Bethaby Hills has with Avenue, the partnership has been able to take uh, advantage of that technology referenced and being able to do things uh, with more different tax types, the ability to be nimble, to be accurate, to be quick in the uh, administration of, of these needs and these revenue uh, sustainability goals that we have. So, Jeff, um, let's shift a little bit and, and talk more specifically about Estavia Hills, and I'll kind of lead you in here with a, with a question. Um, as it pertains to Estavia Hills, and for those of which you are on the phone with us today, how are municipalities and counties and states, for that matter, combating these challenges that you've laid the foundation for? We're partnering with good uh, third-party firms such as Avenue to be able to get command of our data in a very efficient way. The city of Vestavia Hills, we're very, very proud of what we've accomplished. As a city, we're about 34,000, just over 34,000 uh, population. We're a, a suburban bedroom community of Birmingham, Alabama, the largest metro area in Alabama. We have about 325 employees, about a $44 million budget, and we have some interesting, unique circumstances in Vestavia Hills, one of which is we're one of 35 municipalities in Jefferson County. That in itself creates a challenge in administering revenue collections and economic development strategies. We don't have industry. We are this bedroom community that has services and goods that really support and move our economy forward. The pride that we uh, ex exude really leans on comparing national trends to what we are experiencing in Best AV Hills. The slide that is uh, before you right now comes directly from the 2008 
National League of Cities publication that shows receipt, general uh, tax receipts from municipalities across the country. We all went through the recession. We all saw the dip during the recession. But what this chart shows is the upward trend post-recession is starting to drift off a little bit. And we are proud in Vestavia Hills that we've been able to buck that trend. The trend that is, has been bucked and I think is, is best illustrated in the graph that's before you that shows all general fund revenues that come to Vestavia Hills. If you look at the red line, you see our actual revenues, revenues that have increased roughly 10% in the most recent fiscal year, but trended up when most cities were seeing the uh, that the, the previous slide's uh, downward pressures, and from the standpoint of being able to accurately use data to uh, budget, we've stayed above the budgeted amounts that we've had over the course of the last five, six, seven years. So what, what have we done? We've produced more revenue, and we've done it more efficiently. Let's talk about how we did it in Vestavia Hill, because the if we went back in time before that slide, you would have seen a, a revenue trend that was static. It was flat. We were not experiencing growth. We were not experiencing the, the, the renaissance, if you will, that we've uh, seen in, in recent uh, uh, years. And what we found is with all of those 30-plus jurisdictions in Jefferson County, there was significant sales tax leakage. That is, our residents going to other jurisdictions to make their purchases, sales taxes being a large component of our, of our revenue base, that needed to be addressed. We had to have a strategic plan. The challenge with our strategic plan was that the city of Vestavia Hills is 19 miles long and one mile wide. We have multitudes of trade areas that have unique characteristics. If we had just a weak data and data that was not able to be manipulated to be nimble enough to feed our economic development plan, we would not be successful. The beauty of working with Avenue and the beauty of the partnership that we have is we were able to feed our economic development plan uh, to generate results using the data and the tools that Avenue provides. And we feel like that accuracy, again, I'm used the word nimble, the ability to quickly and accurately divide that data by trade areas has really produced results. Those results then have shown out in commercial new construction. That data that we got from revenue, from Avenue has been able to generate new commercial building permits unlike we've seen anywhere in the history of the state Hills. This chart shows three of the last four years having extraordinary, extraordinary growth in commercial new construction. But just feeding that data into our economic development plan was not the only way that our revenues have increased, and particularly our sales tax revenues. The ability for Avenue to partner with us to go into these trade areas that we're seeing growth and to make sure that all the appropriate taxpayers were paying appropriately, whether it was use taxes, sales taxes, taxes on uh, fixtures within new construction, as well as construction materials being brought to those sites really have produced results. This slide right here shows the sales tax component of that, that overall general fund revenue. Yes, we incentivized some actions. Incentivized actions show out in the green arrow where we have net sales tax receipts, that sales tax receipts minus incentives, and then the red line, which 
uh, is mostly overlaid by the green line shows just actual gross sales tax receipts. What you see over the course of time is a steady, healthy increase, and in most the last three to four years, a tremendous increase in our ability to deliver. That deliverance uh, of revenue is something that we're extremely proud of and doesn't just happen. It takes a partnership, and that partnership is, is important from the standpoint of having accurate, good data as well as being able to get that data quickly to feed your plans and react accordingly. Finally, I think a summary slide of this nature speaks very loudly. That partnership that we've had with Avenue uh, has brought in uh, an allowed recovery of over $1.6 million of potentially lost revenue since 2004. Uh, over several hundred thousands, particularly focused on sales and use tax, and then Roughly 2,900 unregistered businesses now having to pay appropriately, creating this level playing field where all businesses pay their fair share and we have uniform enforcement and compliance of our, of our city revenue uh, uh, efforts. All of this leading to something that, that I, I can say very comfortably is that Best Navy Hills is proud of what we've been able to do at the partnership with Avenue. So thank you, Brandon. Jeff, wow, that was incredible and very well done. This is extremely great feedback. Um, I know we at Avenue certainly value our partnership together, and uh, I can't thank you enough for taking the time today to talk about what we've been able to accomplish together. Uh, next, I want to welcome Christy Cato. Um, Christy, can you take us through kind of a four-phase approach here, more so specifics around the cost of revenue management? Uh, more specific details around the avenue process itself, uh, and then elaborate a little bit on the recommendations on handling delinquency, and then the need to maintain, le you know, local control. So, Christy. Yes. Um, thanks. Um, definitely, all of the things that Jeff covered today um, with the partnership with Avenue Administration definitely has a cost. Um, the Internal Revenue Source published a recent report that it cost them $0.41 cents to collect $100 in taxes. That's excluding overhead expenses. There's been other reports um, reporting that it's up to $30 or $40 per 100 in taxes. So think about the administration costs for a municipality. Um, it will vary across the nation just depending on the, the pay scale, the salary scale um, for your employees. And then the benefits, retirement, um, and just the cost of living in, in any particular area. So as we talk today, just think about, you know, different things that you could implement locally, outsourcing, and we're talking about taxes. This could be taxes to permits, to fees, annual taxes such as business license, quarterly, um, so it covers a lot of different revenue sources. Um, don't shortcut your process. Um, we find that taking a shortcut is definitely going to diminish the quality of the data and it will just increase your long-term cost. So um, measure twice and cutting once is definitely a, a rule of thumb here. Collect your data, review the demographics, everything from business classifications, uh, accurate payment histories, activity logs, reviewing your ordinances, um, structured, meaningful communication with your uh, business taxpayers and business community, uh, online file and pay using technology uh, to register, uh, gain the filing and payment information, and then just taking an educational approach uh, to the overall process will save you a tremendous amount of time and money in the long run. We can't talk too much about data here. Um, you know, get the most benefit from your, the data. So when we talk about data, we're talking about not only your initial registry from a business, uh, make it easy for them, uh, ask the appropriate questions, require the appropriate information during a registration process. Um, 
allow businesses to provide stuff updates. You can purchase data. We here at Avenue definitely have partnerships uh, with multiple uh, companies across the nation where we um, do uh, purchase data and integrate that data with uh, tax registries, activity logs, uh, taxpayer notes is very key. We think about this, you should integrate your data and you could create an integrated view of a taxpayer and create like a digital workflow across your departments. And what that's going to allow you to do is any taxpayer contact or business contact that comes through from processing to collections to auditing, it's going to allow a single contact um, which will provide a significant efficiency and just a pr improve your overall administration. So um, if you can involve, you know, resolve multiple issues within one contact, that's key. It makes it easier for you um, and the business that's making that communication. So I think here, um, data accuracy from basic demographics, addresses, phone numbers, contact information, to the business classifications, um, locations, their history is key. Understanding your sequence. Um, current forms and municipal code, uh, like Brennan had said earlier, we represent and work for over a thousand um, local governments throughout the nation. One of the initial things that we do uh, during the process is we review municipal codes, regulations, forms, any type of documentation uh, related to that tax or fee that uh, we are reviewing. And we found about 65% of the time the, the code's not being applied correctly. It could be due to the age of the code. Um, sometimes you hear, well, that's how it's always been done, and I'm pretty sure that Everyone's familiar with that term and, and heard it before. And then many times what, what we've found is lower rates are being administered. Um, you might have 10 classifications being administered correctly and two at a lower rate. Um, interest rates don't apply correctly and penalties. So definitely take time, review those regulations, the ordinances to make sure that those are being applied correctly. Taxpayer data and setup. You know, we've talked about accuracy. Accuracy is extremely important. And as Jeff covered earlier, um, tax authorities use, can use this data to make important decisions, improve tax compliance, uh, economic development, and improve citizen services overall. So making sure that, you know, you have this data up front and it's correct. Taking a taxpayer education approach um, when you're providing any type of notifications, whether it's written, uh, provided online, social media. Um, make sure that you're educating that taxpayer and business on the front end and that that communication is clear and it's relevant communication. Make it simple. Uh, we can't just assume, and we don't here at Avenue assume that a business, um, an entrepreneur that's decided to conduct business, they, they don't necessarily know what all business license might be required. Um, about sales tax liabilities, use tax liabilities, there's a lot of different things and uh, we're just not assuming that, that they know just because they're in business what applies to them. So we take an educational approach. Providing self-help tools and making it easy through online filing and registration. Provide technology. Uh, we recommend that you provide tools that's easy to access, it's available 24-7. Make it convenient, everything from providing answers to questions to registering for the first time and uh, filing that uh, business license renewal or a sales and use tax return online and making payment. So just a quick look at the, the, the Avenue way and, and the way that we have evolved over the years is, you know, initially you had the account registration. You know, gathering the data on the front end um, allows us to provide, you know, a more customized um, experience for that business. Uh, we've gathered their filing requirements, uh, their location information, their rates, and it, whether it's on paper or if it's um, an online tool, um, this is customized uh, for that business, makes it easier. Uh, we 
taxpayer education and support, you know, providing that prompt response, um, you know, providing uh, online tools so that the business can communicate uh, with us. Uh, we find more and more that businesses um, aren't making as many inbound phone calls. It might be email, chat, um, or whatnot to, to provide that support. Uh, administration, make sure your team is well trained here. Um, we are very, we are highly respons responsive. Uh, we have a goal here, and all of our employees are, you know, held to the, the standards that we are answering and returning any call within 30 minutes. Uh, we maintain an average call t uh, answer time of 15 seconds or less, and, and we're monitoring that. Now what we have found, and we do monitor the time that it takes for inbound and outbound telephone calls, one inbound telephone call, an average call time is three to five minutes depending on um, the level of the question that's asked. Um, and then you have your wrap-up call. So that inbound telephone call can cost anywhere from four to five dollars per call. That's expensive. So if, if you're taking steps to provide self-help tools, doing the education on the front end, and providing you know, meaningful taxpayer education along with technology, this will certainly reduce the, the cost for this. So here we emphasize a proactive and educational approach to pro promote taxpayer compliance. Once we move into the payment process, checks and paper cost more to process. I think we, um, understand that and know that is definitely um, an expensive process. We recommend, and, and what we do here, we do provide you know tools uh, for online filing and paying, um, secure portals. They have multiple ways to pay. It could be ACH credit, um, an online check, uh, PayPal, uh, credit cards. So multiple ways to pay. Not, and then also we do allow uh, businesses. They can file online, go through the entire process, and at the end of it, if they're still not comfortable um, submitting their banking information online, they have an option to print out a confirmation and mail a check. And what that does, for does it eliminates the need for data entry. The business has done that work for you. Uh, provide frequently asked questions online, um, especially today. You know, we can get food, uh, we can catch a ride, we can do all of our banking from our smart devices. So uh, using our, the self-help technology, I think that's a huge demand. I think the demand's gonna increase um, over time. And like Jeff had mentioned earlier, with the baby boomers moving out of the workforce and uh, millennials coming in, it's just going to continue to rise. Um, self-help kiosks, that's just a few other ideas um, that would help you there. So we have found, you know, four or five years ago, it was about 40% of businesses were filing and paying online. Today, we're experiencing over 80% of filings online, and that's voluntary. That's without any mandate or requirement. So the, the upfront work makes the revenue cycle easy. Um, here at Avenue, our cycle is to mail forms. And we, if allowed and if available um, for your taxing authority, email and electronic notification. So for example, if a business renewed a license online last year, they could renew, they would get an automatic notification. Posting the payment from the distribution of full funds, and we'll talk about reporting more in just a minute to the compliance process. Without reporting capabilities, the best data is not useful. You can do all of the right things, have 100% accuracy, capturing all of the right information, but if, if the system of record um, does not integrate into a, a reporting system or a tool uh, to, to provide reports, to analyze the data, it's really not that useful. Just a few things. Um, that Avenue provides to our clients, and these, this is a very high level, you know, distribution reports based on beneficiaries, who, who's, um, whether it's a board of education to a library to a health department or a hospital, uh, daily and weekly reconciliation reports, detailed payment listings, history and trends so you can quickly see um, 
how you're performing year over year, fiscal year, month over month, quarter over quarter. Um, that's a very quick view. Uh, have tools and queries that are exportable from your system of records so that you can massage and manipulate data and, and utilize that data based on your individual and unique needs. So I think um, without, you know, we t I said this earlier, but uh, without the capabilities for reports, um, the data is really not going to give you a meaningful story. After this, we talk about delinquencies, non-compliant taxpayers, which could be uh, defined as um, you have the businesses that just fail to remit. Um, they don't provide any filing or informa information. You have others that might file without payment, uh, underpayments, late payers. Um, this is an extensive, uh, a significant revenue loss, not only you know, for local government, but it's expensive. It becomes much more extensive to collect that dollar versus if this business was compliant. Uh, we recommend that you do mail past due reminders, followed up with uh, courtesy calls. You know, based on whatever your regulations might be, offer you know payment plans with multiple ways to pay. Uh, withhold business license. That's a powerful tool. If they fail to pay a sales tax, a lodging tax, a liquor tax, whatever it might be, withhold a business license um, until they can get that paid in full before it's issued, or work out some satisfactory payment agreement. Um, here, uh, what we implore and what we would recommend is an early warning system before they become delinquent. Uh, use your data and analytics to analyze um, and determine what businesses might fall into noncompliance. That data is there. That's something that we review here at Avenue um, daily uh, to look for any type of warnings that this uh, business might become delinquent. And then we also use the data to segment, prioritize, and customize the compliance approach, really depending on the type of tax, the locations, the demographics on, on what we do there. So I think you know, advanced models can help act, authorities take action and focus efforts to avoid and reduce noncompliance. This, this approach is going to reduce your overall administration cost. Here at Avenue, we realize that locally administered taxes and fees could be a significant portion of your annual budget, and it's your priority. And I think that you know a focus should be to maintain local control, um, and then that's going to require the right technology, the right processes to prevent a state from inserting itself into local taxation, which um, you know state the state revenues are going to be their priorities. Um, we think a few things and a few ideas and approaches for this is to have a central point of filing. Um, businesses want this. They lobby for it. Um, they want a one-stop shop where they can take care of their business uh, in a, a quick, convenient way. And we think giving citizens a good experience, make it easy, you know, uh, a positive experience is something a business is more likely to repeat. Um, and utilize the technology and the self-help tools to make that happen. Uh, we've talked about Avenue, and just to kind of give a little bit of more experience in the volume that we're processing, we process over a billion dollars in taxes and fees for local governments. Um, one recommendation and one thing that I think you can take away and, and what we do, um, We've been doing this, and we do it a lot, but we continue to learn, and we make adjustments based on the information and the business community response. Um, I think we can take away from this that local governments, you know, look at your strengths, look at your weaknesses, what are your opportunities for improvements. Uh, if your data is not digital, digitize that data. Use the analytics for decisions and process modifications. Um, provide the tools for the taxpayers. Uh, to make it easy, convenient, and quick. And that's going to give that business um, time back to them so they can focus on running their business, which will definitely feed into your local economy. Effective administrations can unlock value, improve revenue, and lower cost overall. Awesome. Christy, thank you. Jeff, thank you um, for that, that 
that elaborate and detailed overview of not only the impact of Bethavia Hill specifically, but more so the, the process that, that Avenue follows as we partner with local, local and state governments across the nation. Um, let's move into our question and answer period here. Um, here next, uh, I do want to remind everybody about the special offer we'll, ha we'll have here in just a minute after we get to the question and answers that many of which have come through the chat, the chat feature. Um, so stay tuned for that. Christy, the first one that came through was how, how does this process integrate into our current process? Um, the data that we process and obtain is definitely the, the local jurisdiction's tax data. And it's, we can integrate it and work with the municipality to integrate it into their um, primary software. However, that would not be a requirement to utilize Avenue services. We could provide uh, access via the cloud. Great. And secondly, um, as, as you were talking uh, in the beginning of your, your outline, so do you take credit cards? We do. We take all major credit cards. Awesome. And then the second part to that same question was, in addition to credit card payments, does this process handle uh, multiple tax types? Yes. Um, for example, for the city at Vestavia Hill, we are administering their sales tax, their annual business license renewals, uh, rental, uh, lodging, rental tax, and um, alcohol taxes. So, uh, and for example, a larger jurisdiction in, in Oakland, um, we're only administering their soda taxes there. Okay. Another one says, um, Christy, it says, Christy, great presentation. Um, I'd like to hear a little more on the call time return. Uh, you briefly touched on it there on one of your slides, but I, I missed part of the, the conversation there. Can you elaborate for me on the, the call time return? And I'll add something to that as well. As you're giving your response here, could you just um, talk to the education and the, and the value that is added by our staff that is speaking to these folks who call in and the, and the response time that we have in place? Right. Uh, yes, we do have a, a phone system and we're tracking all uh, inbound uh, contact from taxpayers. And we monitor that. We have supervisors that's trained. Um, we have looked at industry standards on the average speed of answer, meaning from when a phone call comes in to when it's picked up. Um, we're well under that at 15 seconds or less. Um, and then what we do, uh, based on the question, so for example, a business license question is going to require probably a length of about four and a half to five minutes to handle that inbound communication versus a very you know, basic general tax due date question that might only last two minutes. But on average, it's a three to five minute phone call and then a wrap up time with notes and the cost on that was, is going to be up to five, five or six dollars. Um, in the event that a business might get a voicemail, uh, we return all of those phone calls within 30 minutes uh, and we're tracking that within our system of record. and. Um, we do provide you know, daily, weekly, and monthly reports on that activity. Uh, email, um, definitely we do receive a, a numerous amount of emails. We do uh, distribute those based on to our subject matter experts and the levels um, that they're comfortable and they're trained to answer. And all emails are responded to within 30 minutes or less. Awesome. Jeff, I'm gonna I'm gonna shift this one to you. Um, it, it says I'm a small slash medium municipality, depending on how you look at it. Uh, what are the top takeaways from your perspective um, for a municipality like myself considering outsourcing this function? Uh, number one, I think knowledge is power. If you don't have the knowledge of where your tax base uh, is, where it's evolving, and the ability to manage that and manipulate that data, I think you're losing opportunities. Uh, over the course of my career, uh, I've basically uh, handled the revenue function in many different ways, turning it over to the state ta uh, revenue department, uh, doing it in-house versus third party, using a third party such as Avenue, and we have been able to be most successful uh, in my career when you use a, a firm like Avenue that is able to uh, give you a platform 
to manage the data in a more effective way. Uh, I started off my comment saying knowledge is, knowledge is power. I'll end my comment with that. And having the right partner will help you accomplish that goal and drive your bottom line. Very good. Very true as well uh, in many respects, uh, Jeff. Um, Christy, this one came through a couple of times, so I'm going to save this one for the last one unless we have a few others come through as you, you talk about the answer here. But uh, what is the cost? Um, what is the processing fees? What are the fees? You can, this one came in in various manners. Um, there are various fees, and it's really going to depend on um, the type of tax. It could be based on a percentage of revenue, a very small percentage, uh, or based on a transaction fee, the, the number of transactions that we are processing. Um, but I think that uh, we would have to dig in and get more information on the complexities and the customization, but I think you'll find it is uh, a huge cost savings overall. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, again, you can submit additional questions if they come up after today um, to webinars at avenueinsights.com. All right, and we will, we will, like Christy mentioned, we will get back to you within 24 hours of an answer, and we'll get that answer and um, that question routed to the, the correct um, person. So before we end today, uh, we do have a special offer for all the webinar attendees today. As a partner um, in your revenue administration, you know, our commitment is to educate you as, you as uh, municipal leaders and, and taxpayers alike. So Avenue is um, extending the offer to fund, you know, the tuition of a professional, any professional development course of your choosing for a member of your staff upon engagement um, with Avenue to perform the service for you. Uh, we'd, be, we'd be happy to um, extend this offer to any course uh, to your liking. Um, to, to further your professional development. So if you're interested, we'd love to meet with you. We'd love to talk about your specific situation. And we'd love to give you more information about the services that we do provide, and also just hear from other uh, customers and contacts that uh, we have experience with on a day-to-day -day basis. Our partnership is, is truly valued. So please send those inquiries if you have them to webinars at avenueinsights.com, and we'd be happy to uh, to get something get something scheduled. So again, very thankful for taking the time today to hear our presentation. Um, we'd love to meet with you. If you have any questions, please visit us at www.avenueinsights.com to learn more information and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.